Hi, I'm Joel Osteen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm Jesse Campbell. Let's continue with our devotions. We're in, in Acts chapter 12, beginning in verse 18. God has just miraculously delivered Peter from jail. Now, what happens to the centurions who were guarding Peter's jail cell? At daylight, there was a great commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. This is Acts 12, 18. After Herod had searched and did not find him, he interrogated the guards and ordered their execution. Then Herod went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Jesse, is that fair of God? That these centurions, these guards, these soldiers were just doing their jobs and were powerless to fight the miraculous intervention of God's angel to deliver Peter from prison. So is that fair of God? We do not accuse God of wrongdoing. To do so is sin. See the book of Job. Moreover, these soldiers were not innocent. Peter was innocent. These guards threatened Peter's life with their weapons if Peter tried to escape. God then escaped delivering Peter from these would-be murderers. And so the fate that they suffered was exactly that which they threatened upon Peter. Incidentally, the sentence that would be dealt upon Peter is exactly that which they did to the guards. This was a policy. If you as a soldier of Rome lost track of your prisoner, the prisoner would be put to death and so would you. By the way, as a side note, this adds further veracity to the resurrection claims within the Gospels because the seal that was placed of the tomb of Jesus carried with it the, the, the authority of Caesar. No guard would ever be complicit in a grave robbing attempt to come in and steal the corpse no guard would ever fall asleep on the job and certainly wouldn't help them, roll, help them roll the stone away to get to the body because they would pay with their lives for such a crime. These guards would be executed and given the same sentence as Peter. The difference is that Peter was innocent. They were, quote unquote, just doing their jobs. Where have you heard that before? Is it war criminals on trial for what they did, just following orders? You see, they were doing what their boss told them to do. What their boss told them to do was to threaten a man of God who was innocent of the charges brought against him with weapons that were lethal. If you have conscientious objection to your own profession that is tantamount to that, then you have an opportunity to repent. Because that not all soldiers who would show favor to God's man throughout the book of Acts are gonna die. In fact, you're gonna see in just the upcoming chapters these centurions, these soldiers, even Paul's own bodyguard, end up giving their lives to Christ and being saved as a result. So they did not they did have a choice in the matter and they chose the side of Caesar. They chose the side of Herod. They chose to still threaten the man of God with weapons. Every one of us at some point or another professionally, if you're, unless you're in ministry, sometimes even when you're in ministry, have the chance to forsake our consciences professionally. These men certainly had the same opportunity. While God has grace and God can use people who are put in key positions, tune in for tomorrow's devotion, these, these guards are also going to get saved like crazy as we continue in the book of Acts. God is a God of perfect justice. And so these guards ordered to be executed, were not ordered by the way by God, but by Herod to be executed. If we're honest, Sometimes we're the guards and we're just following orders. Would you repent now upon the example of these two prison guards? This is the book of Acts. What God does next with Peter is tremendous. God's also going to pour out wrath upon Herod in the coming passages. This is still happening. The spirit is still at work. The same spirit that founded the same church that you and I experience today is at work in you right now. So go live out the book of Acts. Ready? Go.